What's going on guys, E Enthusiast here and in today's video we're going to be looking at the newest addition to the Arduino family which is the Arduino MKR1000 board. This board was released by Arduino a couple of uh, months ago and I got my, I finally got my hands on it. So I'm going to be walking you through the basic setup, some of the differences to the Arduino Uno. This is obviously an IoT Internet of Things board so it has quite a bit more capabilities but there's also a couple of differences that you need to watch out for so we're going to be looking at the spec sheet we're going to be looking at the uh, basic configuration we're going to throw a uh, basic Wi-Fi wireless connectivity program on it and uh, see what we can do so let's get right into it So let's take a look at what Arduino has to say about their board. Uh, the MKR1000 is a powerful board that combines the functionality of the Zero and the Wi-Fi Shield. It is the ideal solution for makers wanting to design Internet of Things projects with minimal previous experience in networking. So here is the overview. Uh, it is a board composed of three main blocks. So you have the ARM MCU, which is replacing the Atmega 328P. You have a low power Wi-Fi uh, module, which will allow you to connect to your network, which essentially replaces the uh, previous Arduino Wi-Fi shield. You have the ECC 508 crypto authentication module, <clears throat> and you also have a one by one stream PCB antenna that's included on the PCB board. There's also a LiPo charging circuit that allows the Arduino MKR1000 to run on battery power or external 5 volts. So you can essentially connect a LiPo battery into this port right here. This is a standard socket so you can create projects where, which are going to be operating externally of your USB connection. So scrolling on down we can see that the board features a 32-bit computational power similar to the Zero board. The usual rich set of IO interfaces, low power Wi-Fi with a crypto chip for secure communication and the ease of use of the Arduino software for code development and programming. All these features make this board the preferred choice for the emerging Internet of Things battery powered projects and a compact form factor. So the USB port can supply 5 volts. As you've seen on the board now you have the USB micro type B port instead of the traditional one on the Uno so that's something that you'll need to pay attention to when you purchase the board. Uh, here's a warning that's very important to pay attention to. Unlike most Arduino and Genuino boards, the MKR1000 runs at 3.3. So the maximum voltage that the I.O. pins can tolerate is 3.3. Applying voltage is higher than 3.3 to any I.O. pin could damage the board. While output to 5-volt digital devices is possible, bidirectional communication with 5-volt devi devices needs proper level shifting. So this is something that we're going to be looking at a later video. But essentially what this is saying is if you had some sensors or if you had some circuits that were running at 5 volts, you will be uh, using a level shifting circuit in conjunction to the Arduino in order to communicate with them properly. Or if you start driving 5 volts, you could potentially damage, damage the board. Getting started information, need help, get inspired. So just like any other Arduino, it has very nice tutorials. Technical specs. So again, the microcontroller, it is an ARM MCU. The board power supply is 5 volts. So if you do have an external 5 volts, 5 volt supply, it is not a problem. Supported battery, LiPo single cell, 3.7 volts, 700 milliamp hours minimum. Circuit operating voltage is 3.3 as we discussed before. Digital I.O. pins 8, PWM pins 12 along with all the pins which are able to support PWM. UART, SPI and I2C. All of the buses are labeled at the bottom so very convenient for you. You have your transmit, receive, SCL, SDA, MISO, SCK and MOSI pins correctly labeled on the bottom. So as you can see I've used some standoffs to make it very uh, easy for me to connect to the board and showcase sort of what, what which pins I'm connecting to. 
analog input pins, seven analog output pins, one. So I'm assuming this is a true analog output pin. We'll get into that at some point in my videos. External interrupts, eight DC current per IO pin, seven milliamps. So this is another watch out for someone who's looking to get into this board because it's quite a bit lower than the original Arduino Uno, which is 40 milliamps. Flash memory, SRAM, EEPROM. EEPROM is no longer existent. And finally, we have the documentation. So if you're struggling with anything, if you want to take a look at more in-depth information, you can go to the Arduino website and it's gonna have all these schematics. Obviously, it's an open source platform so you can download absolutely everything that you might need. So let's take a look at what it's gonna to take to communicate with the board. So before you start with this guide, please be sure that you have installed the SAMD core using the Arduino Boards Manager. Let's take a look at that page, install additional Arduino cores, starting from the IDE version 1.6.2. Just as a side note, as of recording of this video, I am using 1.6.9. Only AVR Arduino boards are installed by default. Some Arduino boards require an additional core to be installed. So if we scroll down, we can see how to install a core. We have to go to Tools, Board, and Boards Manager. So let's open the Arduino RD IDE. Tools. Board. Boards Manager. And here, what they're saying for the MKR1000, I should be able to install a specific core. So let's take a look. MKR, if I enter that on the search, I can see that this is an Arduino SMD board, 32-bit ARM Cortex M0 Plus by Arduino. Uh, boards included in this package, Arduino Genuino 0, Arduino Genuino MKR1000. So this is exactly what we're looking for. If we click on it, you can see that there's different. there has been different revisions and we are going to install the latest. Give it a few seconds and we will be right back. So now that that's done, let's take a look at the next steps. To connect the MKR1000 to your computer, you need a micro B USB cable. The USB cable will provide power and allow you to communicate and program the board. So let's attach the USB cable like so. I have it right here. So it's plugged in, it's displaying a green LED and something is happening on the computer side. Let's get on with the tutorial. So right now my computer is installing a device. So it's trying to find something. It's trying to download a uh, driver for the USB. To upload a sketch, choose the MKR1000 from Tools Boards menu. So we can do that right now. Tools, Boards. Let's see if it installed correctly. So it's right here. Okay, you must use Arduino software IDE 1.6.8 or later. So I do have that installed. Please make sure you have the correct version. Caution, the microcontroller is at 3.3 volts. We've discussed that before. Serial port, ADC PWM. Um, installing drivers for the MKR1000. If you're running this on a Mac, there is no driver installation necessary. I am running currently Windows 7. So download the Windows version of the Arduino software. We download finishes, unzip the downloaded file, connect with a USB. Windows should initiate its driver installation process once the board is plugged in, but it's gonna be fit, it's gonna fail. So click on start, open the control panel. So you may or may not see the whole screen over here but essentially control panel, navigate to systems and security. Uh, I believe it's just in system. Click on system and open the device manager. Let's give it just a moment. So here's the device manager. Under ports, you should see the Arduino MKR1000. So it seems to be able to identify it so right click and choose update driver software update driver software browse my computer i'm assuming that's what they're gonna say 
browse my computer navigate the folder with the arduino software downloaded and unzipped earlier locate and select drivers folder in the main arduino folder press ok and next to proceed if you are prompted with a warning dialog about not passing windows logo click continue anyway let's take a look at that browse it is in c arduino drivers that's what it wants to select so arduino drivers next is already installed so let's take a look locate and select the drivers folder in the main arduino folder and press ok next so it appears to already be installed you have inst installed your computer and device manager you should now see a port listing similar to arduino mkr comb 24 so this is exactly let's take a look what i'm able to see so i'm guessing the driver already installed as i've updated arduino to 1.6.9 so it had prompted me to install some drivers it is possible that it was already there but if you're doing something different if you are troubleshooting drivers you want to make sure the correct drivers are able to communicate with your board so go through these steps and make sure everything is okay all right so one important point that i wanted to make is that the onboard led on this arduino is no longer on d13 like it was on the uno it is now on d6 therefore if we want to upload the blink sketch to our board we need to modify the uh, example sketch so changing 13 to 6 changing this 13 to 6 and 6 down here so this is going to be just the hello world so to speak for this arduino let's verify the sketch save it in the default folder to compile all right so the sketch has been compiled let's upload and see what we get so very simple it should start blinking in just a moment so as you can see it is blinking in one second intervals the led is located up here labeled l and like i said it is now on pin 6 versus pin 13 of the uno so thank you guys for watching as always hopefully uh you've come up with some projects that you're going to be using the mkr 1000 for I'm going to be following up with some tutorials. Obviously, we're going to have to connect to the Wi-Fi in the next video. And uh, stay tuned, like always. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.